Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at a green venture into the dungeon deck featuring two copies of Eliwick Tumblestrum, the 4 mana planeswalker from Forgotten Realms starts out at 4 loyalty and the plus one lets us venture into the dungeon. So if we haven't chosen one of the three dungeons yet, we get to start out in the room at the very top and trigger its ability, and then as we keep venturing we can move down the dungeon until we complete it and keep triggering the abilities of the rooms we pass through. Then the minus two lets us take a look at the top six cards of our library, can reveal a creature to put into our hand, and if it's legendary we also gain three life. And the minus 7 gives us an emblem saying, creatures we control have trample and haste and get plus 2 plus 2 for each differently named dungeon we've completed. And our deck is very much capable of completing one, even two dungeons in the same game, so the emblem can be very powerful if we get to it, because our deck is designed to complete those dungeons as quickly as possible. Eliwick helps us with that, but we've got a whole host of other creatures that can venture as well. With that 2 mana, the full playset of the Yuan T. Malison, a 2 mana 2 1 Snake Rogue, cannot be blocked as long as it's attacking alone, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we can venture into the dungeon. So by itself, the Malison can easily complete a dungeon for us, especially one of the shorter ones, like the Lost Mine of Fandelver, which is often the one we're gonna choose to complete first. Then at 1 mana, we also have the full playset of Fly, a 1 mana Enchantment Aura gives the enchanted creature flying, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we can venture into the dungeon. So that's another way of repeatedly venturing into the dungeon, and we can even combine fly with the Malison's ability, that way if we deal combat damage to the opponent, we get to venture into the dungeon twice. Then at 3 mana, we've got two copies of Varys, Silvery Moon Ranger, 3 mana, 3-3 three, three legendary human elf ranger with reach and ward 1, and whenever we cast a creature or planeswalker spell, we can venture into the dungeon, and this ability triggers only once each turn, and whenever we complete a dungeon, we get to make a 2-2 green wolf creature token. And then finally at 4 mana, we also have two copies of the Wandering Troubadour, a 4 mana 4-2 Dragon Bard, saying at the beginning of your end step, if you had a land enter the battlefield under your control this turn, venture into the dungeon. So we can even play a land and play the Troubadour afterwards, and still trigger the ability at the end of our turn. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got some more creatures with a full playset of Jaspera Sentinel, which can help us ramp out some of our more expensive cards by tapping another untapped creature and then adding 1 mana of any color. Then we also have a full playset of Swarm Shambler, 1 mana, 0, 0, Fungus Beast, enters battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to make a 1 1 a green insect creature token, and for 1 mana we can tap the Shambler to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so it can keep growing over time. And the ability from the Shambler is also quite synergistic with Snakeskin Veil, which is up next, a 1 mana instant that puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, and it also gains Hexproof until end of turn, so that's a great way of protecting one of our key creatures, like the Malison, or maybe a creature that has a fly on it. And then by having the Shambler in the same deck, we can pass a turn with one mana available, and then if the opponent plays a removal spell, we can maybe cast a Snakeskin Veil, and if they don't, we can still use that mana to grow the Swarm Shambler. And then we also have the full playset of Blizzard Brawl, alongside 18 snow-covered basics in our mana base, to give one of our creatures plus one percent indestructible until end of turn if we control three or more snow permanents, and then that creature will fight an opposing creature, so a nice cheap removal spell. Then at 2 mana, besides the full playset of Malison, we also have the full playset of a Ranger class, a 2 mana enchantment class, enters a battlefield generating a 2-2 wolf token. Then for 1 and a green we can level it up to level 2, in which case whenever we attack we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target attacking creature, so that's great in combination with the Malison, which often wants to be attacking alone anyways, that way we get to grow it so it deals more damage over time. Also quite synergistic with the Swarm Shambler, which cares about plus 1 plus 1 counters, and then finally, at level 3, if we pay 4 additional mana, we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells from the top of our library, so that can provide a nice bit of card advantage as well, and also combines nicely with the scry that we get in a lot of the different dungeons. 
Then we also have two copies of Disdainful Stroke as a cheap counter spell, countering target spell with mana value 4 or greater. Great against any sweepers that the Snakeskin Veil cannot protect us against, or against big threats like Goldspan Dragon or Alrun's Epiphany, which can be quite backbreaking if those resolve. And then we've covered pretty much all the cards in our deck. Then the mana base, as we've said, includes 18 snow covered basics with 8 islands and 10 forests. Two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a nice creature land that can potentially deal the last points of damage, especially great at recovering from sweeper effects. And then four of the blue green pathway as additional mana fixing. So the entire deck is rotation proof. And uh, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our deck has a plan, which is to give one of our creatures flying, potentially multiple times. Nightwitch can potentially get in the way. So for now we'll play Shambler, probably gonna go for a turn to Ranger class, and then maybe we'll fly the Wolf token, we'll see. Put under red-black. It's gonna stay back. Yeah, still go for Ranger class here. And Snakeskin Veil is a great pickup, can protect whatever creature we put the enchantment onto. Not really interested in trading for the Eyetwitch. Bona's gonna kill the wolf. And a Shambling Ghasts, that's fine. Alright, I'm liking Double Fly here. Could also fly once, grow the Shambler, keep up Snakeskin Veil, but as soon as we Snakeskin Veil we'll get an extra counter so it no longer dies to the minus one, minus one. So this seems fine. And then next turn, especially if we draw a green source, I can uh, level up Ranger class and still keep up Snakeskin Veil. Alright, so that triggers. Sadly, we don't get to draw the card from Mastery. Because we essentially countered it. And then probably go for the Lost Mine, so we get a treasure token on the second level, keep the forests. Could also go for the goblin now, that we know we're drawing a land, but I think by making a treasure it's still worth it, because then we can potentially play the troubadour ants, cast fly, or grow the shambler. Now with double eye twitch on defense, could also just opt to level up ranger class, but then the opponent will be able to learn for a removal spell for the shambler. So I think we're just gonna go troubadour, pass, and then maybe level up the Shambler end of turn. And then... Probably just drain the opponents. Reclusive Painter. Resolves. Ooh, Eliwick is great. So we can start venturing that way. And have a Shambler on defense. Okay, so do I want to play another Shambler? Probably not. Just keep my treasure available. Showdown on the splash, okay. Finds a bunch of lands, which the opponent needed, but they only get to play two of them before showdown ends. And another Shambling Gas, opponent has one card left in hand. So if it's not a heavy hitting card, we are looking good. Varys also quite nice. So we can venture, start a new dungeon. And then I don't mind going for the longer dungeon now. I just love a good quest. The Mad Mage. Play Varus. 
All says reach. And then do I play another Shambler to trigger Varys? Yeah, it might be okay. And then I can still grow the other Shambler. End of turn. Ranger class. Doesn't trigger Varys. Might not be necessary. I also don't mind drawing a lance with a Troubadour in play. Could see something like Goldspan Dragon. Which we sadly cannot counter, but we can block it. Yeah, there it is. So we'll see if they attack. Double block, and we're probably going to lose the Shambler. Can put a plus one counter on it anyway. Opponent puts Varus first, okay. That happens. I guess I'll do this now just in case. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And next turn I can even ultimate Alleywick, which would be awesome. Who's ready for adventure? And uh, maybe prevents Eye Twitch from attacking us. Can level up Ranger class. And then could fly the Troubadour to have an extra flyer maybe. And then still grow both Shamblers. Like, the goal here is just to ultimate Eliwick at this point. Another Troubadour I don't mind. Sentinels, okay. I'll just keep the Troubadour. Opponent has four attackers, we have four blockers. Predator can maybe sack Shambling Ghasts to uh, shrink some of our creatures down. But yeah, if we can ultimate here, we're in great shape. Opponent also maybe could have sacrificed an Eye Twitch just to get a Necronic Fumes to exile Aliwick, but now it's too late. They can sack a Shambling Gas to kill my Shambler in response, that's fine. Grow the Shambler. Alright, so time for ultimates. I think so. Time for the big finale. Play another Troubadour. And attack with the team. And then where do we put the plus one counter? Maybe the token? Or the Troubadour? Let's put it here. And with triple fly, we will get to venture a bunch more here. Which will also potentially improve our emblem. Might be able to complete uh, Mad Mage's dungeon. And we're also just close to dealing lethal damage. Our creatures have trample, so Kalein is gonna have to block. So a triple venture incoming. Shambling gas resolves first, so they do get to kill the Troubadour here before it gets an additional plus two plus two. But I think we can live with that. 
yeah, first game and we already got to see an Alleywick emblem in action. I don't think I've managed to pull it off in any of the previous practice games, so I'm pretty happy. We'll just go with the skeletons here. Scry. And then get to cast more stuff for free. Completed a second dungeon. Cast the ranger class. And I guess we're not done yet. Level up my ranger class. And we get to venture again. Because we put a land in play. And we'll go for Tomb of Annihilation, why not? Opponents at one. And we're going for triple dungeon completion. And our opponent explodes. Well, that one's much better than expected. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Sentinel into Malison plus Shambler, turn two. Two of our Snow Lions for Blizzard Brawl. Ranger class is solo two. Against Red Black, how likely are they to kill the Malison? Pretty likely. But then again, the sooner we get it in play, the better. So, still gonna go for it here. Next turn I can maybe play Ranger class and level it up to grow to Malison. I don't need Blizzard Brawl. Famous last words. And then... Time this for green, tapping Shambler, why not? Now Malison has a counter, so if the opponent tries to kill it, we get a token from the Shambler. Land on top, not strictly necessary, I guess. Would love to find something like a Snakeskin Veil to protect Malison. So I can level up my Ranger class once again. Maybe start by attacking with Malison, see what happens. Could also attack with Malison and a wolf. Because uh, if they want to chum the Malison, that's fine by me. And then I'll probably grow the wolf to diversify a little bit. Uh, Soul Shatter forces me to sack the Malison. So glad we did it this way. Soul Shatter is a pretty great answer against our deck since it gets around Snakeskin Veil. I'll level up here. And then Free Shambler seems better than leveling up the one in play. And there's a Snakeskin Veil waiting for us. Alright, Sweepers could be bad for us, but we've got Spot Removal covered. Kalein. And there's Fly for next turn. So for now... We can play Sentinel. And then attack with the Wolf and Sentinel. Grow both of the Shamblers. And then probably put Counter on Sentinel here. If I wanted to play around Crippling Fear, I guess putting the Counter on the Wolf also makes sense. Although we can always put an extra counter on it with Snakeskin Veil. Put on double jumping, maybe Plum of the Forbidden here. Nope. Maybe they're just setting up a sweeper. Alright. Six mana could be a Blood on the Snow. Get back a creature from the graveyard, in which case... We weren't going to be able to save any of our creatures anyway. Orcus for x equals 2. Okay. Think it's worth it to save an extra Swarm Shambler. And 
then play Sentinel. Blizzard Brawl. Gonna be pretty decent next turn, although we're still missing the third snow permanent. So what to do now? Could put fly on one of my creatures to maybe force a trade. Yeah. Put it on, let's say, the wolf. And then attack, putting counter on sentinel. One falls to six. Another reclusive painter. Which we can take out. And another Soul Shatter is not incredibly effective here. It's going to be a Flunk instead. Trigger Swarm Shambler. But it does kill the Sentinel. Opponent chumps. Well, let's see if they have another Orcus here or another Sweeper. Tybalt instead. Okay. Yeah, the minus is not going to be good enough. Since we have 4 damage with Ranger class, can just attack the opponent and deal the last point. Alright. Definitely got to see the power of Ranger class in this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. So in this case, where we don't have another one or two drop to play, I think I prefer going turn one Shambler and then turn two Sentinel level up Shambler, whereas usually you would play Sentinel first. Okay. So yeah, we'll stick to the plan. Turn one Blight Blades, could be a Death Touch deck, could be some sort of party synergy deck. Next turn I can play Varus and maybe Blizzard Brawl. There's an Innkeeper. Play Varus and then... Yeah, it's probably fine to Blizzard Brawl while the opponent's mostly tapped out. Sam Varus. Alright, we've had a nice start. Gotta hope to keep it up. Hopefully draw more creatures to trigger Varus. Circle of Dreams Druid. We can also take out with Blizzard Brawl. So for now... What do we like? Probably just Blizzard Brawl. I'll fight with the Sentinel. That way we don't increase Varus's power in case they want to chum block. And then I think it's better to grow the Shambler as opposed to dealing two. Sadly didn't have a creature to start venturing. Would be a great spot for a Ranger class as well. Maybe a fly enchantment, although now the sentinel can potentially get in the way. Another Circle of Dreams Druid. So our opponent does seem serious about ramping. Troubadour's excellence essentially lets us venture twice here. So... Play Troubadour, trigger Varus, and then which dungeon do we want to go for? Given that we have Varus in play, we probably want to go for one of the shorter dungeons so we get to Wolf Token a bit sooner. I don't mind Tomb of Annihilation since we're being the aggressor. And then... I think I'm okay trading off the Shambler and Varus at this point. 
And if they want to double lock Sentinel, they'll lose one of their creatures too. Opponent takes it. Play my land now. Troubadour triggers. And uh, we'll lose a 2 life. Put our opponent to 5 potentially. Also, the innkeeper can gain them more life. Alright, we'll see what they're ramping into here. Could still be in trouble if it's something big and powerful. And yeah, Koma certainly fits that description. So they get to make a token. Innkeeper plus Koma also threatens to take over the game. So can play a land which will trigger the Troubadour. But I don't think we're beating a Koma. Not with this... Uh, current board state. If we had a fly enchantment, I would basically force the opponent to sack a serpent each turn, but that's not even the case. So, yeah, there's not much I can do, sadly. And it's not gonna be long before Koma takes over. So, no attacks. I can sacrifice a land here if I want. And we can level up Swarm Shambler. Opponent's gonna meet in a tavern to pump the team. And that's very aggressive. How much damage is this? It is enough for lethal. But we can make some reasonable trades. And I can even eat Sentinel or maybe better Innkeeper. And then... Maybe chump Koma with the Sentinel. Because I want to keep Varus and Troubadour alive. In case we draw an extra land. Shambler will trigger Varus, which will complete our dungeon for us. And make a wolf. And then... I guess I don't mind attacking. Might be dead on the way back, but the longer the game goes, the more the opponent's advantaged. Okay. Well, not sure what happened there. Don't think her opponent meant to take it, but uh, sure. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Shambler into Ranger class. Hope to pick up a few lands along the way. And there's a land. Playing my snow covered basics first to power a Blizzard Brawl. Land 4 gives us Alleywick. Next turn we can level up Ranger class. Opponent's got their own. So... Don't mind... Leveling up Ranger class, attacking with my wolf and then killing the opposing wolf second main, because we won't have Indestructible yet. Just to keep the opponent from going off with their Ranger class. Could also attack with both and then offer the trade for Swarm Shambler, since we have another one incoming. It's also reasonable. And then I get to save my Blizzard Brawl for a future creature. 
So land gives us Alleywick. If not, we can maybe keep up this Daneful Stroke. Alright, opponent's a three color deck. Levels up Ranger class, but no creature to attack with. So I can play Sentinel and then probably just attack with a wolf. Keep up either the Stainful Stroke or growing the Shambler. So we still get to use our mana efficiently if we don't have to Disdainful Stroke. Skyclave Relic, okay. Opponents are ramping into something big. And we'll grow the Shambler. So now with the Sentinel, we do have the ability to cast Eliwick potentially. Never mind Vanishing Verse to exile Sentinel. That works. And we drew the land anyway. So now I have to decide between playing my Planeswalker, potentially leveling up Ranger class, although that seems worse, or just keeping up Disdainful Stroke, which is also tempting given the circumstance. Yeah, the correct play is probably keeping up Disdainful Stroke, although it's a little bit mana inefficient. So I'm just gonna go for Eliwick instead, which is the more fun option. And then let's go for the Tomb of Annihilation since the opponent's already pretty low. And then who do we grow? Maybe the wolf in case of a crippling fear. So now if there's a sweeper, we still have a planeswalker in play. Although this Daneful Stroke could have just countered it. Shadow's Verdict, yep, that works. Snakes can veil a bit late to a party. I think I got a minus two to try and find a cheap creature. Well, Varus is probably still worth playing, but it means shields down on this Daneful Stroke. Had a decision how to play the pathway, could have gone for an extra green source, which was also reasonable. Vanishing Verse takes care of our planeswalker. All adventures have to end, I guess. And Spider Queen shows up. Okay, so got a couple options. Could go face with Varus for opponent double blocks. Then we can uh, snakeskin veil to make it a 5-5. Five five. And then Malison gives us an evasive threat to pressure Spider Queen if needed, or just finish off the opponent. I think that's reasonable. They might just chum block with a single spider. In which case I can also keep up this Daneful Stroke, so that's not necessarily a bad thing. And then I think we gotta play Malison, because our opponent's gonna be able to make more spiders, so I need the evasive threats. Even though that means shields down on Disdainful Stroke. Opponent falls to 5, wants to keep the card in hand. Another Shadow's Verdict would be backbreaking. Spider Queen leaves behind two spiders, but is gone. Okay, 
can maybe see a level up on Ranger class. Nope, this is something else. Seven mana. All right, just a layer of the Hydra activation. That's not too bad. Take seven. So we get to attack with an unblockable Malison. And uh, one point shy of lethal if I Blizzard Brawl. Finally picked up our third snow permanent. But I can even attack with both. So if we do this, and then just send both opponents forced to chum block Ferris, put a counter on Malison, and get to venture into the dungeon, and that will force them to sacrifice something to the trigger. And get to keep up this Daneful Stroke still. Not gonna level up Ranger class. So, best case scenario, if they go for another Shadow's Verdict, we counter it. Opponent passes. So, they could have another spot removal spell like Vanishing Verse, in which case I would be attacking with Malice and they kill it. If I send both, do they have enough mana to eat Varus with, let's say, a Lair and Vanishing Verse? If they animate Lair, two, three, four, five, they could make it a five, five, which is not enough to kill Varus. and cast removal Malison, but they could just block the Malison and cast removal on Varus if it's not attacking alone. So kind of an interesting spot. I think we just send the Malison here. And then see what happens. Alright, GG's. Malison across the finish line. Would have been able to level up Ranger class to level 3 and keep up stroke. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Shambler, which we can potentially give flying on turn 2. Turn 3 Varus and then keep up Disdainful Stroke. I guess we can wait on casting fly and for now just level up Swarm Shambler, which I'll just do now. Next turn could play various ends, play fly. Ooh, never mind. Now I want to wait until I can keep up Snakeskin Veil. So we'll play Varus, which keeps up both Snakeskin Veil and the Shambler's ability with the Sentinel. And then next turn we can commit fly, half protection. And that's gonna leave us in a pretty great spot. So don't mind putting this on Shambler. Could also put it on the Sentinel. But then... Hmm. I don't have double blue so I can't keep up stroke and fly. But I think that's okay, given that the opponent's stuck on two lanes. So they're probably going to search for environmental sciences to hit their land drop. Back of Varus. Could still cast it just to trigger Varus. I guess at this point it's Tomb of Annihilation. Yeah, we'll keep up uh, this Daneful Stroke instead, seems better.
this Daneful Stroke the perfect answer. And then our opponent explodes. Yeah, next turn we wouldn't quite have had lethal, but we would have maybe forced them to discard a card if they wanted to stay alive. All right, so we finally got to see our Disdainful Stroke in action. Definitely a key card to counter sweepers, counter big plays like Goldspan Dragon, which can otherwise get out of hand, so our deck's not great at dealing with large dragons. So yeah, overall got to see our blue-green venture deck in action, even got to see an Eliwick emblem, which I wasn't expecting to uh, see in play today. So yeah, pretty fun way to approach the venture mechanic if you don't want to go with the typical Esper deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.